Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this video I'd like to show you how to, in a residential design, how to put in some uh, foundation elements. Specifically we're going to be putting in a uh, foundation stem wall and a footing in order to support our structure. So this is a little bit different. Uh, in regard to uh, modeling and private architecture, typically what you do is you start backwards and you work your way, uh, work your way to the front. Of course when you're actually um, you know, building something, you're starting from the front working your way back. For instance, um, what we've done here uh, so far is we put in our walls, our floors, some finish elements, and uh, I've actually put in the site and some, uh, you know, some site elements in here too, some site components too. But uh, what we haven't done yet is put in our foundation. So typically when you do a project, obviously you do your, uh, you do your site work first, and you put in your foundation, and you put in your floor and your walls and your second floor and your second floor walls and so on and so forth. So it's a little bit different. So you're going to have a somewhat of a completed model before you even think about your foundation, which is kind of where we're at right now. So what we like to do is uh, create a new level. If you go to one of our elevation views, perhaps the north view, take a look at that. What we have are our three levels. We have our floor one, floor two, and a roof level. And uh, we have uh, elements associated with each one of those levels so far. And what do do with our floor one level? And this is just a uh, just a relative plan here. We don't have absolute coordinates or elevations on any of our, any of our points here. Uh, I made our my floor one level about a foot higher than the site, and I made the site uh, all the elements around the house at about uh, zero uh, inches in elevation. So um, you want to make sure that your floor one level is uh, you know six inches, eight inches, twelve inches above the the site. That gives an opportunity for the foundation system to actually be above the, the grade level. And uh, what you don't want to do is you don't want to have finished elements or wood uh, right on the grade because it, uh, you know, soil decomposes. It's just a, its nature. And you want to make sure you have elements in there that support your uh, building that uh, can withstand that. And concrete is a, is a real good choice. And so what we're going to do when we, when we put in our foundation in here so we're going to make sure the foundation is above the grade a little bit and the rest of the house is going to be built on top of that. So because of that, my floor one is going to be, uh, you know, just for uh, demonstration here, it's going to be a foot higher than the, than the grade. So a couple things we can do. What we need to do is we need to uh, insert a level. And uh, if and I'm following uh, the convention of our, of our book. And our book is called Autodesk Revit Architecture 2013. No experience required by, by Eric Wing. And if you want to refer to that book, uh, you're welcome to do so. And, uh, we've, uh, and there's going to be some conventions I'm going to be following through the book. But, uh, and I believe this is also a Revit function here, too. But uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a level called top of footing, T period, uh, zero period, or O period, and then footing, which stands for top of footing. A couple things we could do. We can uh, go to our architecture tab and uh, go over here to our uh, level and add the level that way. The advantage of doing it that way is uh, it'll create a, a floor plan for us. Or another way, which is just as quick, but it involves an extra step, is just to copy that by clicking on uh, the existing level with the control key and dragging that down. What I like to do with that level is make it maybe uh, about negative four feet, as we've done in class. And we're going to rename that. We're going to call that. Uh, double clicking on it. We're going to call that. Uh, T period, space zero period, uh, footing. Remember, everything's in capitals. With the expectation you're eventually going to be putting these elements into a drawing format, you want everything capitalized. So as long as we're at it right now, let's go ahead and capitalize that. So that's our top of footing level. And you'll notice that uh, the other targets for the, for the levels are blue, which means they're interactive. There's uh, other places uh, where you can go into our project browser to find uh, some of those levels, but uh, the top of footing is not. So what we like to do is we like to add that as a floor plan. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, uh, what we want to do is go to the View tab, go to Plan Views, go down to Floor Plan, and we're going to add that top of footing to it. So it's the only section in here. And if we go to OK, and you'll notice that right now it's not part of the floor plan up here, but if we go to OK right now, it's going to go ahead and add that top of footing. And everything's uh, um, you know, organized uh, sequentially in ascending order. Okay, so here's the top of footing, and now we have something that looks like the edge of the house in here. If you click on it, you can see what that is. And if you look down here to your status bar, the status bar is down here. As soon as I move my cursor, it's going to go away from that. But if I click on that, and you look down there, okay, I'll do it again. I'm not going to move my cursor. You, see, you can see it says floor, wood truss, uh, joist 12 inches, carpet, and so on and so forth as its description. 
what happens with our footing, and let's go back to our footing plan, we're already on that. Now let's scroll down to our view range and adjust our view range. So remember our footing's down about four feet, but what it's doing is at the camera level, or the top level of our view here, is about seven foot six inches above that negative feet, so about three and a half, uh, three and a half feet above our um, our footing level, or above our first floor level, it's looking down and it's actually seeing the first floor. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's make it four feet above uh, the bottom level. Make our cup plane about two feet. And that might show any elements that we might have in there, such as uh, vents in our, uh, in our stem wall. It might show this, which would be appropriate to see this. And you could adjust that too. Maybe uh, three feet might be more appropriate, so that way it's a little bit closer to the ground. But uh, another one here is we want to make sure, and this follows the book, we want to make sure that this is a negative foot. So this way it actually looks below the top of footing level to see what's below that. So eventually we're going to see in here not only our stem wall but our footing too when we finally get that in there. So do that for both of those, uh, for both the bottom uh, uh, range down here and for the view depth. We want to make sure that both of those are a negative uh, one foot. And if you go to OK, as soon as we go to OK, uh, the wall or the floor is going to disappear, and some of the other elements are going to disappear in, too, in there too. Some of the elements that uh, actually pop through that level are going to be visible here. We could hide those too if we want to do that. Okay, so in the next one we're going to uh, cover the the stem wall, and we're going to put in the footing, and then we're going to come back to our top of footing level and take a look at that and uh, talk about a few other things, and we'll go from there.